uh, my name is Marilyn McClurd. I am the um, Director of HR Faculty Administration. So um, nice to, to see all of you here and welcome to American University. Um, I do have some slides here that I can put up on, um, on the screen. Can you all see that okay? Yes, we can. Okay, fantastic. Um, so I'll go first and then I'll pass this on to, to my colleague, Joselino. Um, so the HR faculty team, it's made up of uh, four of us. Um, myself, um, Katie Mackay, she's the senior faculty coordinator. She handles full-time faculty for CIS, SIS, and SOE. Um, Mikia Cordell, um, also for full-time faculty. She handles the rest of the school. So you can see them here listed. And um, Angelis Guerrero, she's our newest member of the HR faculty team. She's our handles everything that has to do with adjunct faculty um, here at the university. And if I understand correctly, Anna, we have both full time and um, full time and adjunct faculties today here. Okay, great. So I'll talk a little bit about both. Um, so we handle um, from the beginning the pre-employment, which uh, takes care of the background check. So you probably heard from one of us when uh, starting the pre-employment process. Um, sometimes it's quick and easy. Sometimes there's a little bit more verification when it comes to that. But once that's complete and you receive your offer, you will start the onboarding um, uh, with Equifax. That is in two emails that you will receive um, from a human resources um, email, but it does take you to an Equifax onboarding employment center. And that's all the onboarding documentations, policies, procedures, I-9, tax information. And that is very important to take care of right away. So if you have not received an Equifax uh, email, please let me know right away. And I will, um, you have my email here on the screen, but I can also add it to the chat. Um, so for adjuncts, there is a couple things that have to be in place in order for you to receive that Equifax, not only hired and approved, but your department does need to assign the course to your record. So that's very important for the system to be able to generate that email. And it's a two email um, uh, set up. One has your login credentials. The second email will have your password. Um, I can always resend the initial email with your credentials, but the password, you know, that's what's important for, I, I can't, I don't have access to that. So that's important for you to obtain uh, via your email. And uh, once that's set up, overnight, it does get imported back into our system. And that's important because that assists you in creating any um, account or email access. Before that, um, our online creation um, uh, feature doesn't work because there's no way for the system to identify you without that onboarding information. Um, so that's why it is important. So once the onboarding is complete, um, we do ask that you wait somewhere between about three days for the, the documents, especially the taxes to, to process um, in order for you to set up your direct deposit. But that's all done through our AU portal. There's a left-hand side uh, menu called Work at AU, and you'll see there Eagle Service um, banking information where you can set up the direct deposit. Of course, you can reach out to any of us um, on the screen, and we would be happy to assist you. One of the items in the onboarding is the I-9, and so you do part one online um, where you add your information, but part two, that needs to be done in person. Um, some of your departments do have a verifier. Otherwise, we ask that you come to the HR office. We are open Monday through Friday, uh, nine to five, no appointment necessary. Um, we're located in the New Mexico Avenue by the Wagshaws and the Chef Jeff's building, third floor, suite 350. And those that does need to be verified as soon as possible. It's actually a three-day window after your hire date. So if you haven't gotten that taken care of, you, if you could come to the HR office this week, uh, next week at the latest, uh, with your acceptable documentation to complete that I-9 verification. Um, now, another um, important, um, and I didn't write this here on the slides, unfortunately, is our IT help desk. You know, if you do have any issues with your access or online, um, obviously we're here to help, but they would be our first, um, you know, line of defense. They they help us set up anything that may be going wrong. If there's an, you know, access issue, like if perhaps you were... Um, a student before, now you'll be faculty, your staff and also faculty, the access has changed and they're the ones that have to make sure that they, they change that uh, on their end. 
And lastly, and this, I will send this on to Joselino to explain in more detail, but for the full-time faculty members, you do have 30 days from the start date to enroll in benefits. And um, I, if, let me click to the next one. Oh, here's the uh, Human Resources Office address, 3200 New Mexico Avenue, Suite 350. Um, and keep a lookout because sometimes we do have additional locations for I-9s uh, in the Bender Library or other locations. So an email will be sent out if um, other locations are available. And here's some important links. The one I wanted to show you is this third one, this benefit overview. Um, when you do go there, not only does it have a lot of information that Jose Lino will go over in a moment, but it does have a button on the right hand side that says make your selections. And that's where you go to um, access your benefit portal to be able to enroll. But of course, you can reach out to us at the faculty team uh, if you have any questions. And if we can't answer them, then we'll send you over to Jose Lino and his team because they're the experts at that. Um, so that's all for me, um, pre-employment, onboarding, get you all started. And of course, um, it doesn't end there. We're here to assist you, you know, throughout your employment, if you have any questions about your payments. And, um, and I know there was a question that came in that Anna sent to us about when you get paid. Now, if you're a full-time faculty member, you are paid on a monthly basis. So the payment does go out at the end of the month, the last day of the month. If you're an adjunct faculty member, it's uh, on the biweekly schedule based on your course. So if you go to uh, this second link right here, payroll schedules, you will see one that's called adjunct payroll schedule, and you can find your course dates, and it gives you an idea of when your first pay date, when your last pay date. And it's all based on the biweekly schedule, which you will always also find on this website. So you can click in there, see the biweekly schedule. They're on Fridays. And... Um, and, and that's, uh, I think, it for me, Anna, um, unless other questions popped up that I, I didn't see them, I'm going to then send this over to Jose Lino so he can talk about benefits. Thank you. I think I have a question. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, my name is Nana. I'm from the Department of Economics. Um, I've been with, the, I'm a student, and so I've been a TA before, so my my details is in the system already. So when I got the adjunct um, position, I was waiting for new onboarding hiring uh, documents, but it was not coming. So I, I reached out to Angelis and she said, um, because I was already in the system, I have it, or you have it already. And but, that is uh, correct, yes. Yeah, so my question is, um, when I was in there uh, first as a chair and all that, I, there was no deduction in social security for me. So I want to verify if um, this time is going to be the same or I should come in for any other, uh, for further rectification because I want my social security to be deducted. Okay, so if you, if you want your taxes to change from what they were when you were being paid as a student to now, then you do need to submit new tax forms. If you want it to stay the same, then you have nothing, you don't have anything to do. Um, if you do want them to change, you can go to our, um, and I don't have that up on the screen, um, if you, um, American University tax information, if you Google that, it'll take you to a site where you can, not only has a lot of information about taxes, but you also have the forms that you can download. And uh, once you complete those new forms, depending on how, what it is that you want to change, you can submit them, you can email them to payroll at American.edu. Again, that's payroll at American.edu. I guess, um, uh, I don't know, because when I was first hired into the uh, uh, American University employee staff, um, I was... I filled uh, the, the tax um, document for my social security, everything. But after the tax year, I saw that social security was not being deducted. And so I don't know. Um, okay. If it's, uh, yeah. I, I, unfortunately, I don't know a lot about taxes and why there may be reasons why that's not being deducted. I would, um, I would encourage you to reach out to our payroll department. So again, it's that same email, payroll at american.edu. Um, they will let you know if you are under a special circumstance that makes you exempt for that. 
but honestly, I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know the answer to specifically why they would not have deducted the taxes. Um, what I can do, uh, uh, Nana, is I can, uh, I can write you an email and copy you to someone on payroll to assist you. Would that be helpful? Uh, sure. Okay. Sure. I have Thank your you. name down here, so expect an email from me. All right. Thank you. And uh, my last question. Um, so at this point, nobody has spoken to me about pay. So I don't know if you are the one to address or you can direct me to somebody to go and Sure, and that would be your department. So yeah, you would have to reach out to your um, either your department uh, chair, your contact, your unit, and uh, ask them uh, about your course information for the fall and what uh, you will be paid for each of the courses that you're teaching. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Merlin, Merlin, can you hear me? I have a yeah. question. Yes, this of course. Robin Sinclair. I, uh, I'm hoping you can give me some guidance. I received my um, verbal offer uh, in uh, on uh, Jan July 31st and uh, an email saying that I would be getting contacted by uh, HR for the hiring process and I have received nothing to date except emails from my uh, my uh, hiring manager but I have nothing I have received nothing and I'm supposed to be teaching on Monday Okay. Yeah. And what uh, is what your you, school? Um, I'm in the writing, so teaching as an adjunct for the writing studies program. Uh, the individual the name I was given that was supposed to be, you know, doing the um, paperwork was Peter Chamberlain. And then I, I sent about two weeks in, two weeks after the offer, I hadn't received anything. I sent him a follow-up, but I never heard, heard anything. And then about a week ago, I got an email from a hunter uh, somebody yep. Hunter and Todd, yes. Mm -hmm. Hunter and he asked me to complete the application again and then he uh, said he already saw that he already had it but the point I'm trying to make is as far as what I'm in a holding pattern and every day I'm checking an email since July 31st for this onboarding materials that you described earlier which I was expecting and it's three days before three four business days before the semester is supposed to start and I've got nothing Right. No, I understand your frustration. Um, well, I will reach out to Hunter. And you said, Robin, that you have already completed that application that Hunter was inquiring about. Yes. When he, okay. uh, uh, Peter Chamberlain had me uh, do it Fill on that out. August okay. 2nd. And then last Friday, Hunter asked me to complete it again, but he said that he saw it. And so ever since then, I've just been waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm really concerned about what happens, particularly with, I'm, I'm, you know, I've worked in universities before, and I know that it takes a minute to get transcripts to you and to do all those things that trigger, you know, the credentials. Right, and, no, uh, that's understandable. Nothing. Let me look into it, Robin. I have your information down, and I will email you with where you are in the process, um, you know, um, let me just look into it and I will and I will um, make sure if I can get Peter and Hunter also involved and we'll we'll get this straight straightened out for sure. I appreciate it. Patrick Joyner is my hiring manager. OK, thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. There's a, another person in the chat, Alex Koch, who has the same issue. Can they reach out to you um, to, to find a way to figure out what's happening of course. in the hiring process? Yeah. Yes. If I can just write down their name. Um, who was that? Oh, yes. I see it now. Yeah. And if there are others on the call as well. Um... Absolutely. Yes. You have my email address and I'll also drop it in the chat as well. And uh, yeah. please send me an email and I will uh, update you and let you know um, um, where you are on the status and how long, um, when to expect the onboarding. Right. I also see somebody with their hands raised. Yeah. Is it Shashank? Shashank? Yeah. Oh. Uh, hi, Marilyn. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I um, used to work at a different university before. Uh, and, uh, you know, I have a bunch of benefits from there. Is it possible to be transferred over to American? And like, who should I speak with re re regards to that? Uh, you know, I was working at UCSB. They are also handled by Fidelity. So like, you know, uh, I can see when I log into Fidelity, I can see both my appointments. Okay. But uh, I couldn't see a way to transfer my benefits from one to the other. 
And when you mean benefits, you're talking solely on retirement benefits to have yes, them come right. here. Okay. Yes, well, yes. And, and if you wouldn't mind, I, Joselino is going to go over the retirement benefits and guide you on where you can find out more and how to transfer that, because that is something that's commonly done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Thank Great. You. Marilyn, we have a question in the chat, a couple actually. I just want to make sure we, we can address them. Uh, Antonio is asking if a person is coming from a part time position going into full time, will the pay automatically adjust? Uh, yes. And so if you've been hired on a to a full time position, then you will your wage record is now going to be on the 12th month and all of that will happen. And who was the person that asked this? Antonio. Uh, that yes. Was, yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, I see it then, now. There's also one I think is pretty important. Our full-time faculty paid over nine months. Somebody responded that when you're on multi-year contracts, at 12, it's 12 months. I'm not sure that's the case. So could you clarify that? Sure. Okay. So our, our full-time faculty pay over, over nine months. Can we request that our pay be split over a 12 month instead? So that's something that's taken care of by the dean of faculty in your unit. So you're, you're either um, on a contract for nine months or you're on a contract for 12 months one year, multi-year. So all of that is part of the negotiation of the contract and just the rank that you are. So if you've been, if your contract is nine months, we cannot change it to a 12 month. So you will be paid over nine months. Um, okay. I hope that answered your question. And I'm wondering, Marilyn, if we should switch over to Rosalino and then if you could look at the questions in the yes. chat, just in, in the interest of time. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you all. Very nice to yeah. see you all and welcome again. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rosalino Cruz Perez, Director of Employee Benefits, and I will be sharing my screen. Let me pull it up. And what I'll be sharing is the benefits page on American University on American.edu. Let me just pull that up. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'll get started with you know, here we have uh, a plethora of information about the benefits. And just to um, piggyback on what, Mer what Merlin said, you have 30 days to enroll in, in, in most benefits as a new hire. Uh, so that's important to do uh, to complete your enrollment within 30 days. However, for the retirement plan, you can enroll anytime during the year. Uh, let's scroll here. Uh, you can click here to make your benefit elections, and this will take you to the My Benefits website. And the My Benefits website will walk you through enrolling in your uh, medical, the dental insurance, any healthcare flexible spending accounts, um, life insurance benefits, any head insurance. Uh, so most of the benefits you will enroll through the My Benefits website by making your elections here. Um, for the retirement plan, I'm going to click here, there is a separate website where you would enroll to elect how much you would like to contribute to your retirement plan. And it's a set of a multi-step. So you would first decide uh, what percentage you want to contribute. You would go here, click here to this website, and this will take you to the uh, net benefits. It's a fidelity hosted website where you elect how much you would like to contribute out of your pay. Then you select uh, where you want that money to go to, whether you want that money invested within Fidelity, uh, within TIAA, or a combination of both Fidelity and TIAA. And so then once you make that election in, in terms of how much you want to contribute, uh, where you want your money to be invested, and uh, then the next step would be to designate your beneficiaries. Uh, for your retirement plan so that as part of your enrollment, enrollment process in the retirement plan, you will designate your beneficiaries. And the beneficiary designation you will do within each website. So for example, if you decide to contribute to Fidelity, then you designate your beneficiaries within the Fidelity website. If you decide to contribute with TIA, then you would designate your beneficiaries within TIA. Um, if you, I'm going to go back to uh, the remainder of the benefits. I know there was a question about community benefits, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, but I do want to mention that, you know, for those of you um, that are uh, full time faculty, if you have worked at another um, higher education institution for at least a thousand hours in a 12 month period, 
uh, then the one-year waiting period to receive matching contributions can be waived. And so if, you, if that's the case, then I encourage you to complete the retirement plan eligibility verification form. And so this is the form where you complete, uh, you complete section one with your information, and then you send it to your prior employer or um, higher education institution for them to complete section two, and then you return the completed form to us. We'll verify, and if everything is in order, and you will, you will receive instructions to enroll in the retirement plan. And once you have enrolled in the retirement plan, then your matching contributions will start within one to two pay periods rather than having to wait uh, for one year of service, to meet the one year of service requirement. So let me go back here to Benefits Home. So I think we talked a little bit about, you know, your deadline of 30 days to enroll, you know, in, in most benefits. And so we have uh, more information here. Uh, we offer medical insurance, there's a care first, which is the PPO plan, or Kaiser Permanente, which is an, an HMO plan. So with care first, you can visit doctors that are in or out of network. With Kaiser, then it's sort of a one-stop shop, so you would only visit doctors that participate with Kaiser. Uh, we also offer dental insurance. Um, let me mention, if you enroll in care first, then you receive your prescription insurance through Express Scripts. If you enroll in Kaiser, then you receive your prescription insurance through Kaiser. So we have all the information listed here. In terms of the dental plans, we offer two dental plans. Um, Delta Dental is the company that administers the benefits. And so there's a basic plan and a comprehensive plan. And you'll be able to see here a comparison of the dental plans in terms of you know, what they cover uh, to determine which, which plan would work better for you. We also offer uh, flexible spending accounts, and we offer two flexible spending accounts. One is the healthcare flexible spending account, and that's for your healthcare expenses or those of your dependents, um, where you can contribute for, for this calendar year 2023, a maximum of 3,050 pre-tax that you can use to reimburse yourself for healthcare related expenses. And there is a dependent care flexible spending account. Um, you can contribute up to $5,000 for the calendar year. And the dependent care you can use to reimburse yourself for daycare expenses for dependent children up until the age of 13 or an adult parent, for example, that lives with you. And so if you enroll in the dependent care, it's really um, you're paying for care that uh, you're paying for someone to take care of either your child or an adult dependent so that you can work. And so that's sort of the, the premise behind the dependent care account. And both accounts are pre-tax. So the amount that you elect to contribute uh, reduces your, your taxes for the year. And in terms of life insurance, the university offers basic life and ADND, and ADND stands for accidental death and dismemberment insurance of one time your pay. And so that's paid by AU, but you can enroll in optional life insurance for yourself, for your spouse, or for your dependent children. And also you can purchase additional accidental insurance for yourself and your family. And you know we have more information listed here in terms of what the coverage levels are, what the premiums are for each coverage level. Um, you know, for your spouse or your dependent, as well as for accidental insurance. We also offer a prepaid legal plan that, you know, covers, you know, legal expenses that could help you with, uh, you know, any expenses that are related to, that you might use an attorney for. So for example, if I uh, pull up the list of covered legal services, they will help you with preparing a will, a living trust, with reviewing mortgage documents, um, you know, if you're purchasing a house, they'll help you review, you know, your settlement documents. Uh, so there's a long list of services that the uh, prepaid legal services with MedLife legal plans can help you with. And with the MedLife legal plans, you can enroll either at new hire when you first hired or during open enrollment each year, which we generally 
hold during the fall. Then vision benefits for each of the plants are provided within the plan. So if you're enrolled in CareFirst, then you get your vision benefits with CareFirst. If you're enrolled in Kaiser, you get vision benefits with Kaiser. So uh, there is no separate vision plan. Uh, we also offer some leave benefits, and we have the list here, annual leave. So, um, you know, then there's a family care leave. You have the holidays, personal leave. So I know we're, we're short of time, but, you know, I, I encourage you to review the leave options and reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to put the email address at the bottom of the chat. Uh, um, since I'm sharing the screen, I can't see if there are any questions. I'll be sure to address those um, in a second. Uh, but I'd like to mention, you know, we have the options to leave here. If you have any questions, I encourage you to contact us at hrpayrollhelp at american.edu. And a member of the benefits team will reach out to you, you know, to answer any questions you may have. We talked about the retirement plan. Um, something that we also offer is the retire well planning. And so retire well planning is a program that we offer uh, every spring and fall. It's for everyone that you know would like to learn more about what they need to do to plan for retirement. So regardless of if you are 5, 10, 20 years away from retirement, I encourage you to attend uh, the retire well webinars. We talk about the benefits the AU provides at retirement. We talk about Medicare and uh, when to enroll in Medicare. We talk about strategies to claim social security. So it's really, uh, really good information to have to help you plan for, for retirement. Then we also offer education benefits. And so there's tuition remission that's offered for uh, full-time uh, faculty. And that's, you know, it, it has a requirement of four months. So after four, four continuous months of employment, uh, you can use tuition remission for yourself and your spouse of, or domestic partner uh, to take courses at American University. And they can be courses that lead to a degree or they can be non-degree courses. And the tuition remission benefit covers the full tuition, but it doesn't cover any other costs um, such as um, registration costs, the, the, the $50 application fee for tuition remission, or any lab fees, those are not covered, uh, but the bulk of the cost is, is covered by the tuition remission program. And there's dependent children education benefits, and those um, really would be the tuition scholarship, which is um, a full scholarship for a child, a dependent child to attend AU, and that covers a maximum of four, uh, four academic years or eight semesters, and it covers full tuition. Um, and that uh, the faculty member would be eligible after working for two consecutive years. And then there's also a tuition exchange program that provides tuition remission that other institutions that participate with the tuition exchange. Um, I would like to mention that you know once you meet the eligibility requirements for the dependent tuition scholarship at AU. Um, you know, once you have, you meet that requirement and your child meets the requirement of being your tax dependent, you are pretty much guaranteed that benefit. Um, whereas with the tuition exchange, um, it is a very competitive program. And so, you know, you would, after two years of service, then you can uh, apply for tuition exchange for a dependent child, but there is no guarantee that, you know, that you might be able to get the tuition exchange benefit Whereas with the AU dependent tuition, then there is that, that guarantee. So that's something to keep in mind. So I know there was a question about commuter benefits and we do offer commuter benefits through Optum Financial. And there are several commuter benefits. I'll start with the uh, faculty and staff parking at AU. And so there's a monthly parking that um, you can sign up for for $126 per month. Um, if you will be uh, coming to the university, you know, every day, uh, you know, every work day of the month, then, you know, this is something that might work best for you. Um, if you will be at the university, you know, some, some days during the month, 
then you might want to consider a pay by phone where you only pay for the time that you use uh, in your parking on campus. Um, there's a transit subsidy for full-time present staff. And so what this means is if you, if you will be uh, at, on campus and you have a full-time presence uh, designation, meaning you're, you're, uh, you're going to be, and this is, I, I'm sorry, I, this, is, um, this is only for um, staff. So this benefit would not be applicable for faculty. So I'm going to you know, close that window and keep uh, going through the next benefits. For commuter benefits, then there's smart trip cards. If you already have a smart trip card, then you can sign up for up to $300 of the benefit um, through Optum. You enter your smart trip card information in the Optum website, and then that amount will be automatically loaded to your current smart trip card. If you don't have a smart trip card, then you can get a new smart trip card and have that money loaded to your card. Um, and you can use it you know, for smart trip, you can use it for Metro VRE, Mark Train. So there are several options. And if I scroll down back here, there's an additional option where if you use other, uh, other commuter services like Mark, VRE, Uber, Lyft, then you can sign up through Optum Financial for a prepaid MasterCard. And so the benefit of the commuter, uh, of some of these um, commuter options is that the money that you put into the plan is on a pre-tax basis. Uh, so it reduces your taxes and then you can use it to pay for, for commuter benefits. And the last benefit I'll talk about is if you live close to campus and you will be biking to campus, then you're welcome to sign up for uh, you know, the bike benefit. And so this is a $20 voucher that you get each month and it's, it's taxable to you. So uh, just keep in mind that you know, you'll You'll be, you'll be taxed on the $20 uh, and that's, that's an IRS requirement. Um, but you know, within each we have instructions and in how to sign up for, for each of the benefits. And then there's it's some work-life uh, family resources. Uh, you may be receiving emails from a Healthy You faculty and staff wellness program where you know, we encourage you to walk. There are uh, walking programs, exercise programs to help you uh, uh, you know, stay healthy and to build community. The next... Rosalina, Rosalina yeah. may I interrupt briefly? So we're actually in the lunch break now, and I, I do realize these are such important things to, to share. I'm wondering if you would have time to stay and look through the questions in the chat and answer them, and then we can let people go have lunch if they need to, which I assume everyone does. Uh, Absolutely. Everyone, of course, the Zoom session will keep running, and I, I hate to interrupt um, because this is important. I've already made a note that we're going to make this session slightly longer next year to make sure we have time for these things. But since we don't yeah. necessarily have time to take verbal questions, um, let's make sure that we can. We're going to capture all the questions and answers in the chat. So if you do have time, Husselina and, and Merlin, if you're still on, if you have time as well to just look through those questions in the chat and post the, the answers right in the chat. Yes. Um, you, you're welcome to, to finish up your presentation. I just want to, to make sure that everyone knows it, it's okay. We are recording it. So it's okay if they, if they need to leave, leave to get a, a bite to eat, that's, that's fine since we're starting up again uh, at 1 p.m. already. Absolutely. Feel understand. free to keep going. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, so I think the, um, so I'll just be quick with the last, um, let's see. And then I'll go through the questions. Um, can you see my screen in the commuter benefits? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I think um, let's see. It's some of the other benefits uh, that I'll mention real quick. It's a child development center. So there's more information if you have a child. Uh, I encourage you to look through those. Uh, there's dependent care family services, the faculty and staff assistance program, and then last but not least, uh, you know, there's some benefits with the credit union. There's a group uh, auto and home insurance where you might be able to get some discounts and then lastly, pet insurance. Uh, so I'll stop here and then I'll start reviewing our questions and I'll include, I'll start you know, answering questions and I'll include our email address in case you have any questions after today's presentation. Thank you for your time.
And Joselino, a couple of questions that popped up in the chat. If maybe one of them is about insurance cards. Is there somewhere where they can download the cards or when will they receive it? I'm not sure if that's something that you can show them on the screen um, share. Yeah, so um, ID cards, once, once you have enrolled in, in the medical plan, then you can download ID cards either from carefirst.com or from kp.org. You'll be able to log into their website and download temporary ID cards that you can use while you wait for your cards to be received in the mail. And uh, both Carefirst and Kaiser have options where you can download the cards via an app. So for example, um, you can use either the App Store or Google Play Store to download those digital cards and add them to your digital wallet on your personal phone. And there was one hand up as well. I, I believe it's Rodney. Outstanding. Thanks so much, Joselino and everyone. Um, I just had two questions, please. Um, one is related to my, um, for some reason, I keep getting a, an error message in my attempt to link my payroll to my checking account. I've done it at least seven times. And so I don't know if there's someone that could either reset or help me out, but I don't know what to do there. The second one is, I um, transferred from another institution, and when I what I did was I took my, I guess it's some transfer of insurance document. I took it to the, my previous institution. They've completed it, and I wanted to, to just to see if it was received, and so that I got com I have confirmation that that document was received, and and so that's my, those are my two questions. Thanks. Okay, Rodney, was that your waiver that you completed? They completed for you. Is the insurance waiver that one, the one page, the one sheet document that's signed by my previous that one? You mean? Yes. Was it, yes. Was it the retirement plan eligibility waiver? Okay, I'll look into that for you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And then and if, the direct deposit, Rodney. I, I'm going to send you an email and connect you with somebody in payroll that can assist us. Um, we may ask for some screenshots, or he may already know the workaround. So I'll connect you um, to to our payroll representative. Awesome, Marilyn. Thanks so much. No problem. So I think there was a question. Um, so when does the health insurance start? So if you're if you if you start on the first of the month, then your health insurance starts the first of the month, regardless of when you enroll. If your hire date is after the first of the month, then your health insurance starts the first of the following month. So if your hire date is today, then your health insurance effective date would be September 1st. And I've received a few questions about the different payrolls that we have, the biweekly and the monthly. And unfortunately, that has to do with the position that you're hired under. So if you are a full-time faculty member, um, there's no way for us to switch it. It has to be paid out through the monthly payroll. Um, adjunct faculty, uh, I'm sorry, adjunct um, faculty will be under the biweekly. The only exception is, is if you're paid an overload for a full-time faculty member or um, a summer payment that may be added into the biweekly, but your position, your salary as a full-time faculty does have to be paid under monthly. Sarah, I think you had a question about the commuter benefit. Uh, what I'll do is I'll connect you with someone in my team that can help you with figuring out. It looks like you are currently using the commuter benefit, but but you're not and you're not receiving it uh, through through the smart trip or otherwise. Yeah, I live in Baltimore, so I take the Mark train and the metro and the shuttle and the MTA bus to get to work. Mm -hmm. 
So I needed to pay before, but I needed to get down there because I started on the 7th. And I noticed that you had benefits through Commuter Direct, but I wasn't eligible to sign up yet because I didn't have all my login credentials the day that mm -hmm. I started. Um, so I'm just not sure how, like what the best situation would be for me. It's around $350 a month for commuter benefits. And I know that we can have up to $300 pre-tax taken mm -hmm. That's correct. And I, there are too many things, too many variables in this scenario. So I feel like I just need some help figuring out the steps that I need to take in order to set that up. I've already purchased the card for September because you have mm -hmm. to get it before the 15th of the month. Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> so, I just, if I could uh, save some money, that would be great or, you know, whatever, whatever would help. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. I'll connect you with someone on my team that can walk you through that to make sure that you're, you're all set up. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. I've also added uh, the payroll email for everyone to see on the chat, but I've also um, attached a file and it's the detailed instructions on how to set up direct deposit. They're very useful. Now, if there is an error, you know, this, you'll still receive an error and um, we can get payroll to assist you. But this one um, is a good form to, to have handy and follow. This is quick a comment. Can you hear me? Yes, yes I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Oh, so regarding the community direct, I just wanted to say um, I used it years and years and years ago. Um, I think that I think one of the some of the benefits of community direct coming from Maryland is that um, sometimes you can park at this station for free. So if you come out of BWI, you know, uh, parking at BWI is free. And the other thing is it depends on it's it's if you come every day, it's probably very, very worth it. If you don't come in every day, just kind of check and see, you know, um, the, the the cost of depending on the station you're coming from the cost of the the uh, the ticket from that station to Union Station and then you know the metro is basically the same so um you know if I were coming in every day and I'm still looking into it also um but if I were coming in every day I would absolutely use it I'm finished thanks Tux thank you. So if we've addressed all the questions in the chat, Marilyn and uh, Benino, thank you so much for coming. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Anna, for having us. Yeah, no, we have so many great questions. And thank you so much for taking the time to stay for uh, an extra few minutes. Um, and um, we'll be in touch. Uh, but for now, enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll be back in session at 1 p.m. Thank you all. Enjoy your Thank lunch. You. Thank you.